Before I start my sermon, I would like to tell you a story in a form of a confession. It's getting a habit, confessing you to you my sins. When I was about 17 or 18 years old, we used to travel to the mountains to cut grass, hay for the cows. We had only one cow. My family was not a farming family, but because of the economy crash, we kind of scrambled together a cow so we can survive. And it wasn't a customary thing for me to be in the mountains cutting grass. And I was extremely tired after about 10 days of 10 hour, 12 hour work. That's, if you know, that's the hardest work you can ever do, cutting grass with a sickle. And with my friend, I was heading back to the village. And of course, there was no transportation. I was walking about 20, 10 miles, 20 miles. And as we climbed on top of the hill, I look down and I see this gigantic truck with so much hay on it that couldn't see even the face, it was climbing up the mountain off the road. It was quite a scene, so I started watching it. As it started getting closer and closer, I realized there's smoke coming out of the side of the truck. And we were a little scared. As it approached us on top of the hill, we saw also the flames coming out from underneath the truck and catching the hay, it's a dry hay. And then the driver jumped off the truck and came to the back of the truck and tried to unwind the wires that were holding the hay together so that it will fall off and he will save his truck. We were standing about 20 feet away from the truck and he couldn't untie it. And he turned to us and said, come on, come on, let's help us, help us to untie the truck. I tried to do my first step and my friend cut me. He said, do you see those flames going up? That truck is gonna explode. I think he had watched too many American movies. Trucks don't explode. But I, uh, I stopped and we watched the truck burning more and more, the hay, and the guy trying to untie the thing and he couldn't do it. At the end, when he realized he can't do it, he jumped back into the truck and drove off with the flames coming out of it. It was quite a scene. And the flames had already gotten to the brakes and destroyed the brakes. He couldn't stop, he hit the side of the road and the truck went down the cliff. We were frozen, my friend and I. As we walked down to see what happened, the whole road was covered with burning hay. We found the driver on the side of the road. As the truck had hit the side, the door had opened and threw him out, and then the truck went down the cliff. We were very blessed. He had broken arm and a leg. We lifted him up. The first thing he said when he got up, if you had helped me, my truck would not have gone down the cliff. He was right. In America, when you tell this kind of a story, it doesn't make sense. When you see fire, you, to you call 911. On top of that mountain, there was no 911. We were the 911. We were standing right there. And we, if we had given him hand, maybe we would get some burns, but we would have probably saved his truck and potentially saved his life too. Because if the door didn't open, he would have gone down the cliff in the truck. So I have not confessed this sin to ever to anybody, but it's been now 25 years that is sitting in my heart. And once in a while I remember and I say, what did I do? I didn't do anything bad. No, I just didn't do good. I ceased to do good. I stood and watched a tragedy happening and I did not say anything. I did not do anything about it. There is an expression about the Jewish Holocaust. It says, when they came after the Jews, we didn't say anything. When they came after us, there was nobody to say anything. That's what Christ talks about today. In the gospel, he says, you saw a hungry person and you did not feed them. You saw a thirsty person, you didn't give them water. You saw a stranger, you didn't welcome him. You saw a naked person, 
You didn't give them clothes to wear. You saw someone sick, you did not visit them. When someone was in prison, you did not visit them. Did we do anything bad? No. I was just home. I wasn't doing anything bad. But the lack of doing good is what Christ is talking about. He is not talking about the harlots and the prostitutes and the thieves and the distortioners. He's talking about good people. And he says, because of that, you will be on my left side, not on my right side. He is not talking about criminals. He is talking about good people. Good people who, like me, stood on the side of the road and watched somebody's truck burn. One other time in our village, somebody's haystack, entire haystack, caught in fire. Wires were going over it, sparks came down, and those haystacks were 30 feet up in the air and 20 feet long. The whole entire village got together and they carried water bucket by bucket from 500 feet away from the only source of water in the village. And they put the fire down and they saved that person's entire livestock for the winter. This is not America where your hay burns down and you buy more. That's all you got and there is no way you can buy from. You cut it in the summer, you stocked it, and that's all you got. If it burns down, you are on the mercy of your friends and brothers and sisters who may, out of compassion, give you a few tons. So those two examples show us, if these villagers had stood by and watched the fire flames go up because they were afraid, because they didn't want their hands get messy, because they were too lazy, because they had something else to do, this person would go hungry and starve in the winter. But they got up, they put their differences away, and shoulder to shoulder put the fire down. When I was doing my uh, dissertation in Armenia, it was about cloning. In 2001, cloning was a very new term. The first tests of cloning tiny cells had been done in Boston. In Armenia, people hadn't even heard about it. Somehow I came across to it and I did a research on it. And somebody asked me, why are you doing this? In Armenia, nobody cares about cloning. That's not going to ever be done in Armenia. Don't worry about it, just forget about it. So I said, am I wasting my time? And then as I was reading articles, in one of them it said, if there is fire in the village, but it hasn't gone to your house, you should be worried because it will get to your house. If there is fire in a village, you should be worried because one day, one time, it will also get to your house because houses are very close, like in Somerville. It can go from house to house and eventually will get to yours. So Christ is telling us today that when we see naked, hungry, thirsty, sick, prisoned person, we should reach out to them and help them. Partially because that's what we're called to do. What else are we Christians supposed to do? Go to the desert and pray on the mountain? That's for the ascetics. For us city Christians, there is nothing else to do but this. Reach out to those about whom St. Paul today said, because Christ has died for that brother that you don't like, that you hate. If you are judging him because he is eating meat during Lent, you are judging Christ because Christ has died for that sinful brother of yours. And today, Christ is telling us, these people will ask me, when did I see you naked and I didn't give you clothes? When did I see you hungry and I didn't give you food or thirsty? When were you, Lord, in the prison and I didn't visit you? And he answers, if you did or did not do to one of the least 
of my brethren you did not do or you did to me. We are entering into the great land. Let us make a strong commitment. Those brethren, the least of the least, are not out there somewhere uh, in, the, in, in wherever they are. They're right there next to you. You are my brothers and you are brothers and sisters of each other. Sometimes they say the church is a hospital. Of course, it is a spiritual hospital. We all have some kind of spiritual disease. Like mine that I just told you, I stood by the burning fire and I did not help. That's a spiritual disease. So every one of us has something like that. And do we visit each other? Do we encourage each other? Do we give hand to each other to stop that fire in our soul? No, my, there is no fire in my soul. I don't care if anybody else is burning. So the Lent is for that. Let us put aside all the differences that we have, like those villagers in my village that had been quarreling three days ago, but today because of the fire, they put their hands together and carried those water buckets to the fire. So that when we come to the Easter, we can walk to Christ and say, Lord, you were naked, I clothed you. You were hungry, I gave you food. You were sick, I visited you. You were in prison, I visited you. You were thirsty, I gave you water to drink. And every time I look at my brothers and sisters, I see you in them. Yesterday I said in my Bible study, there was this, I believe, French mystic, Catholic mystic, who went into a train station to take a train, and it says that she lifted up her eyes and she looked hundreds of people in a train station and she could see Christ everywhere. It lasted only a few seconds and then it disappeared. She could see now normal people. When I look down, I see Christ sitting in the pews. Last year, when I looked down, it was very depressing because you weren't here at this time. We had just stopped the church services. And I understood the value even better of parishioners sitting in the pews and praying with me. And I understood that you are truly the Christ who is present in the church. So let us not be afraid of the Judgment Sunday. This is called a Judgment Sunday, and we usually try to avoid that word. There's no judgment. God loves us. Oh, of course He loves us, but we need to respond with love. We can't respond with judgment to our brother. God loves us and I judge my brother. That doesn't work that way. God loves us and we love our brothers. So that's what our theme should be in the Holy Lent that we begin. And I see Naraj in the back and I'm going to remind him and you the mission of reconciliation. Let us make a big boost in this Lenten time, and I'm giving a big task to uh, Narj. Uh, thank you, Narj, for taking on that beautiful ministry and spread the love inside the community and pour it out into the world now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you.